Hey guys, as you probably know, we have a podcast. It's called The Car Debate. It's every Tuesday and Friday. And we help listeners find cars they'll really love, and we answer your questions. Yeah. Along the way, one of the most common questions we're getting now is when we're doing this research, how are we finding these cars we recommend? Recently, we've been using a new site called Autotempest.com. They're sponsoring a few of our videos to help get the word out. Autotempest is a website where you can search all the top used car sites at once. You just type your search in one time, you find listings from cars.com, eBay, and many, many more. You can even compare results on Autotrader and all of Craigslist. There you go. Now you know what we're using. Go to autotempest.com or find the link in the description. On with the show. If one car is your only solution, then a lot of times it's been a sports sedan. I want to track it. I want to drive it fast in the canyons like this. And it needs to fit my family life. I mean, BMW pioneered this whole idea. It's a segment they pretty much created and then, of course, launched themselves to great heights with the first homologation racer that just killed everybody in the original M3. Right about the time they revised that M3 for Generation 2 was the same time Alpha left the U.S. in disgrace for poor reliability and terrible sales. Was it unreliable? Well, does it say Alfa Romeo? So now for 20 plus years, BMW has been refining the M3, releasing new generations, taking their concept and making it harder and harder to match while Alfa hasn't even been available in the U.S. So now Alfa Romeo returns to the sedan market in the U.S. with a sports sedan aimed directly at this well-refined, well-adored M3. The car you drive every day should be fun, but it has to do the boring stuff too, like commute, be affordable, and haul your groceries. You can have both and we'll help you find it. Fun to drive cars and great driving experiences for everyone on Everyday Driver. our film icon. We drove all the generations of the M3. This is the latest version of the M3. Of course, it's now split. M3 is the four-door, M4 is the two-door. It is essentially the same car outside of those body shapes. There's something else, though, about this M3. It's equipped with the competition pack. It's revised suspension, revised steering feel, a bit more power, and these nifty belts right here. This is the problem with the M3 being the king of the segment, is everybody's gunning for you, but it's also an awfully difficult benchmark for Alfa Romeo to just enter and go, oh, we'll fight against that guy. It's a fresh start. It's a brand new place. It's a brand new platform. Everything about it represents fresh thinking. In the last 20 years or so, when Alfa hasn't even been sold in the U.S., most of what they've made in sedans have been front-wheel drive reworkings of other models. This is a from-the-ground-up, new chassis, rear-wheel drive, sports sedan. Now this will be the underpinnings for future models, but this is the beginning. I'm coming in with an uh, open mind. I love the styling. I think it's unbelievably brilliant. Are we surprised that the Alpha is an attractive car? I mean, the one thing Alfa Romeo has always done well is they've always done cars that look nice. But it just has a really beautiful presence. The lights do nice things. It has all of these rolls and folds in the body that are just voluptuous. The wheels need to be bigger. They need to just grow one inch in size. Look at the rear of this car. The huge diffuser, which the Julia and the Julia TI do not have. That's what separates this car. They paid attention to every aspect from the design, the styling, the engineering, the new platform, and the aerodynamics, that's difficult to do. And for them to pull it off flat out, I like it. I'd buy it. The interior is much more simple than the BMW, but I actually really like it. I love the screen integration. This wheel just suggests there's going to be a driving event here. I will say some of the plastic, some of the presentation doesn't look like an $80,000 car. The materials don't give away the luxurious feel enough. It's less flashy and far more understated, which kind of is opposite of what we think of our Italian friends. I always thought this generation of the M3 had a fantastic sense of menace. I kind of prefer it in four-door. Even at night, the, the angel eyes, the way the LEDs in the back glow, 
It's distinctive and it looks so purposeful. It's not angry, it's, it's here to win. The interior here, minus the carbon fiber, looks like all BMW interiors. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Everything is well thought out, very deep in design and usable. I'm all for the corporate look, but has this self-imposed styling guide now become a self-inflicted styling wound where they can't break out of what's next and think of something and push themselves. And it's almost like we need to teach the Germans to get drunk and dance on the bar for a night and then see what the next three series and the next M3 will be like. As always, BMW does fantastic seats. These seats, of course, are a little more aggressive because they are the competition pack seats. Hey, now with more tricolor on the seat belt, that's what you paid extra for. But they are superior seats to the ones in the Alpha and the Alpha ones are good. The Italians have just gone nuts here. This isn't just a Giulio, this is a Quadrifoglio, or the four-leaf clover. That actually references back to Alpha's history, where one of their racing drivers in the 20s was always second best. He painted a four-leaf clover in a white cube on his car and won his next race. Then shortly thereafter, he died in testing. When he died in testing, they took one of the corners out of the white box, making it a white triangle in his memory, put the four-leaf clover on all of their race cars, and kept on winning. The Quadrifoglio is now, like the M badge for BMW, the symbol that shows this is a high performance version of the Alpha, and I like it. Once you know the background of it, it's great to see the four leaf clover on the fenders and here in the cluster, because you know this is something special. Wow. That is a lot of adrenaline. 505 horsepower from a twin turbo V6. The first place the Quadrifoglio really stands out is this engine. This is a 90 degree V6. It is actually six of the eight cylinders from the California Turbo. Alpha wants you to know this is a Ferrari derived engine. Ferrari is keeping pretty quiet about it. This has more than 60 horsepower more than that M3. And power delivery wise, it's kind of shocking. You can start from a dig pretty low in the RPM, put your foot in it, and for a split second, you might think it's not that big a deal. Then it blows your head off. The Italians have just gone nuts here. Honestly, it makes it hard when other people are driving slowly in front of you. It's hard to be patient because you want to let it run. Passing is easy. It's unbelievably simple. <laughs> this car just moves. It doesn't take your breath away, it takes your words away. <laughs> I always felt like this F80 M3 was a little bit power first and foremost, everything else secondary. Now, this competition pack did do an increase in power. You've got 19 horsepower up here. As a result, you're at 444 horsepower, which is still less than the Alpha. But they have improved the power, but they've dealt with the suspension setup quite a bit. This is one of those cars where triple digits happens and you don't really realize it. Look down and go, oh my gosh, there, there I am. It's, very powerful, it soaks up speed incredibly well. Long, fast sweepers, well, you can tell this car was made for the Autobahn. It does as advertised. When you see this car and you think, ah, oh, this car would be unbelievable at the track, you're right, unbelievable on this road, and it's surprising to think that this is a four-door, and that you could do that with four people, which definitely appeals to me. I, I like that feeling. I. <laughs> I like the noise this car makes. I like the engine. Two big differences in the transmissions for both of these cars. BMW is, of course, the dual clutch, and the paddles are mounted to the wheel. And I've decided I want them mounted to the column. I shouldn't call them paddles because they're far too large for that. These are moose antlers on the column. They're enormous. In fact, if you're hanging onto the wheel and you you kind of have to reach around them to get to everything you need. The wipers, the turn signals, they're way back there past these moose antlers. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Oops. 
but I like that they're always in the same position here, that whatever you're doing with the wheel, the paddles remain. I am so thoroughly impressed with what Alpha has done with this transmission. They have taken the ZF 8-speed auto and made it feel nearly like a dual clutch. As enthusiasts, we can sit around and talk about how fun it would be if this car had a manual transmission. Of course, manuals are awesome, we're big fans, but keep in mind that even Ferrari can't sell a manual anymore. So clearly, the automatic is the much safer choice to actually sell this car, and it does a great job. Drop a paddle, and you're gone. Better put your head back. That is quick. The feeling that I get when I first press on the brake all the way through, it's got the same feel throughout. It's very difficult to modulate these brakes. When you drive really hard and push on the car, what do you do? You cram on the brakes, and as a result, they feel kind of normal. The problem reveals itself when you have to do any kind of stop and go or a little bit of modulation. That thing where you want to just touch the brakes a little bit is very difficult in this car. Commute situation, stop and go, these brakes are going to take some serious getting used to. That drive-by-wire brake system is probably the biggest Achilles heel of the dynamics in this car. It's the thing that is by far the most annoying in all of the drive hard or enjoy your drive dynamics. And I feel like I can be almost surgical with them. You spend just under five grand to get the competition pack, which BMW says is revised. It's revised suspension, revised steering feel, a bit more power, okay. What does that mean, though? The competition pack for a lot of other automakers would be kind of considered the mid-cycle refresh. What they've done here, though, is focused on the dynamics of the car, trying to take that M3, which I think was starting to be overwhelmed by its own power, and make it a more coherent, more everything is blended in harmony chassis. It's got new springs, dampers, roll bars, a revised steering feel that BMW doesn't really say what they did to revise the steering feel, but they keep saying it's a better steering response. And it's like this is how BMW should have built the car. The character this car exudes is precision. I've always talked about that from BMWs precise lines through the corner. I really love that. But unfortunately, what's come with that is an admitted lack of feel through these corners. The steering of this BMW is totally different than that Alpha. First off, BMW's electric steering has a weird artificial weight to it. It just, all the steering setup feels far too heavy. You can saw through corners in this car. You very much steer the BMW. Now that may seem obvious, except for the fact you don't feel like you steer the Alpha. You feel like you rotate the entire Alpha. Here, you grind on those front tires and steer the BMW through the corner. I didn't think about how planted this M3 really feels until I jumped right back into the Alpha after the M3. That Alpha rolls more than this. Now, it dives in a lot faster, but this M3 doesn't roll quite as much as the Alpha does. Part of that is this competition pack setup, which really grounds the car well. There's a lot of precise movement of the car, and I feel like I can be almost surgical with them. It doesn't dance. It kind of crushes. This Alpha is every bit as big as that M3, and yet it always feels smaller. It has almost identical dimensions, pretty much the same weight, and yet any time I jump back and forth, this feels like the smaller car. Just like the M3, it's a rear-wheel drive, high-power performance sedan. However, unlike the M3, this rotates. The M3 beats the road into submission. This just dances on it. All this time, I've been in normal mode. Of course, Alpha's got their DNA settings. But for this road, listen to that. Instantly changes everything. Even in dynamic mode, 
the suspension is still a lot softer than the M3, for most of the time, you're gonna appreciate it much more, especially as a long distance cruiser. There's only a handful of cars on the planet that have a steering ratio this quick. It's kind of normal for a lot of sporty cars to have something in the 14 to 15 to one ratio. The BMW is 15 to one. This is 12 to one. It's two turns lock to lock. The tiniest little move on the steering wheel just carves the front end of this car around. Because of that torque vectoring diff, the back works hard to follow. It's rare that I just feel the numbers. I'm marveling at that. I feel that initial turn and how quick that car turns in. This reminds me a little bit of the Evo, where you can feel some trickery going on, but they've done such a good job with it that all you get out of it is enjoyment. You can feel the rear step in unnaturally to help the car around. So it's not natural, it's not organic, but sadly that can be said about many of the best things in life. The way this car relates to its category is very similarly how the 4C relates to its category with the Elise, with the Cayman, the mid-engine cars that we've driven. It's got stuff up its sleeve. I didn't know this is what the Alpha could do now. This car feels light on its feet. With the M3, there have been some gravel patches through these corners, and I felt like I lose traction in the front because that gravel becomes suddenly like a million little tiny ball bearings. I was just fascinated to feel the M3 start to slide away, and this one has not. I feel like I could drive this just about as fast as any dedicated sports car because that rotation is giving me an amazing amount of confidence that I can just make the corner. Italian car makers have that, let's just try that feeling that you just don't get from a German automaker. You can feel that in these two cars. The BMW is so refined and so over-designed and really overthought everything. And the Italians have kind of a, sure, let's blow that up. See what happens. Let's just try that. See what happens. And we're all comparing it to this car with the competition pack. Again, the way BMW should have built it to begin with. We've driven some of our very favorite canyon roads on this chute, and amazingly, some of our fastest speeds ever on those roads have been in these cars. That really tells you just how capable they are. It's shocking to think I'm in, essentially, a hotted up family sedan. So as aspirational as this car is, everybody else has gotten a lot better. You name the performance sedan from a manufacturer, and we're all comparing it to this car with the competition pack. Again, the way BMW should have built it to begin with. And Alpha, with a brand new platform, a fresh start. Of course, BMW has the history, but I'm wondering if there's been ideas that have been not considered because they might be too wild or too out of the norm for what a BMW sports stand should be. I'm not coming away thinking, man, okay, BMW is it. In so many ways, things like the brakes and the ergonomics, you can tell BMW's been doing this at such a high level for so long. But there's some level of, we've always been the king, we'll always be the king, whatever we do is just gonna work. And the others have genuinely come to play here, and the Alpha is a real surprise. pretty impressed with what Alpha's done here. Let's hope the reliability is there. I want to give this car every benefit of the doubt in every category. We need this car and Alpha's given it to us. It's expensive, yes, but I cannot wait to recommend the Giulia Quadrifoglio as a used car. Let's talk about this car in three years or five years. It's not perfect. The brakes are genuinely weird. I don't like the moose antlers. Some of the interior bits don't feel like an $80,000 car. 
there's things the BMW certainly does better because it's had more refinement. It's something they've been doing forever. This is such a success right out of the box. I'm almost speechless. I mean, it's me, so I'm not speechless, but I'm close. I'm with you. The Alpha is something else. And the Italians had the benefit of looking at all this competition, starting from scratch and saying, okay, we like that. We like that element. We like this. How do we want to improve on that yep. and make it yep. our own and really own that? And that's what they've done. I almost think that BMW has been, were they resting on their laurels? Were they kind of sitting back? Because the competition Oof. pack kind of feels like a band-aid to compete they offered the comp pack. The steering change Aptly is named. good. Yeah, <laughs> the steering change is good. The suspension change is good. Yeah. The extra horsepower, look, we're always gonna like extra horsepower. Of course. This has made the M3 actually kind of this generation, the car I wanted it to be, but the Alpha has so much more. I'm sorry to say it. There's personality and character. <laughs> yeah. These are the cliched yeah. terms about Italian cars. If we're following cliches, on and on and on. here's the problem. Uh-oh. What's the reliability of that car gonna be? That's my thought too. But I say let's give them a chance here. They've done some amazing things with this car. It is. I mean, the Alpha is kind of a revelatory car for me because I wouldn't buy in this segment, I would buy the Alpha. But the thing is, the M3 <laughs> is the benchmark for yeah. a reason. It remains that it the Comp Pack is the way you have to get it. I hate to say it because it's it more is. money, but then if you want something different, Alpha. Because BMW has been doing this for so long, and they've always been the comparison benchmark, I'm willing to give them a little bit more of a pass. This is quite a car, and if this is what you aspire to, you're gonna be thrilled. The M3 is the car for more people. It's a much easier car to extract speed from. It's a much easier car to just cruise in. You're gonna love the M3. If you're a guy buying an M3 to track it and actually drive your family around, you'll be thrilled. It seems like every journalist on the planet is giving this car accolades. As I've said before, it's not perfect. The Alpha is definitely growing into one of those cars where I could see myself owning. This car requires more of the driver and that makes me love it more. You have to work with it, you have to dance. <laughs>